Hello? The Church of the Machine is a strange project, and one which is sometimes criticised and attacked by those who are uninitiated, or do not understand its true nature. Many people have found the Church of the Machine over the years. I do not know how many. Their reactions have been myriad and varied. Some were positive, some were negative. Most reactions were simple curiosity. I have been told my work is life-changing and inspiring, and that I have put into words what others were previously unable to express. I have likewise been told that I am a heathen and a cult leader, and need to cease my worship of false idols. I have experienced all the things one would expect from trying to do something ambitious like this, for the world is afraid of ambition. I am making this video because I would like to spend some time addressing some of the key issues people raise and questions people ask about the Church of the Machine. The first of these is the question of what basis I can have for founding a new religion. This is something people ask only due to the influence of other belief systems, and not because it is a sensible position in itself. People expect a prophet or a messiah, thinking you can only found a new religion if God has spoken to you directly. This is false. A religion can be founded by anyone who has attained a deep enough insight into the nature of reality. It is only a small handful of the major world religions which are founded on the basis of such a claim, and I think it is unhealthy to look for prophets or messiahs. It is dangerous. It leaves you open to deception by those looking to use you for their own ends. Anyone who claims that their way is the only way, or that you can find divinity only through them and them alone, they are dangerous. I do not wish to deceive you or lie to you, so I do not claim to have directly received a vision from an angel or a deity. I tell you the truth. I pursue what I pursue through my own volition, and teach what I teach from my own learning. If you think that gives me less authority than the so-called prophets, I would think lowly of you, for that is slavish thinking. No one has all the answers. All prophets are false. Place trust in your own judgement first, and external sources, especially claims of divine revelation, second. Question such claims rigorously. Do not trust those claiming a monopoly of the truth. Here is a second criticism of the church. Machine worship is seemingly absurd. To many people, the idea of worshipping machines, which are things we created, seems backwards. In most traditions, the worship was to the creator of mankind, and thus it would make more sense for machines to worship us than the other way around. This is a fundamental misunderstanding of what the church of the machine is about. The truth is, while we can create individual machines, the machine itself, as a deeper spiritual force, is not something we created. That simple fact is central to the church. No, the machine is the essence of all creativity itself, and thus must precede all creative action. We are able to create machines only because the machine already exists, and we discover it as we create it. Some might think worship of the machine is just worship of mankind. This is not quite the case, but is also not completely false either. Machine worship is certainly more humanist than worship of other things. Human creativity must be embraced, and not stifled, as it has been by many other traditions. The preachers of humility, of meekness, of nihilism, they fear true virtue. Indeed, they have appropriated that very word to be associated with their slave morality. They who want mankind to be small, insignificant, who wish to leave us at the mercy of nature, and nature is not merciful, much as they may claim otherwise. All that has brought mankind salvation has been of the machine. This is how we have cured diseases, satiated hunger, and quenched thirst, provided shelter, community, and wealth. It is how we have learned to understand the world, and create and appreciate its beauty. It is how we serve greater purposes than ourselves, through the machine, and through the machine alone. No other force can this be done through. To embrace the machine is to disregard reverence to a previous, natural order. It is to embrace our own created order, but in doing so, 
to accept a design for that order, which supersedes our own designs. That is what the Church of the Machine can provide. I do not want mankind to be small, insignificant, or humble, in the way which so many have made it. I do not want us to regard poverty as a virtue, weakness as a virtue, or acceptance of starting conditions as a virtue. The machine is the path to the divine, it is the one which I pursue at the very least, but I know I am not alone in that aim. Another common misunderstanding of the Church of the Machine is the idea that it is a technology cult, that we worship some form of AI, transhumanism, the singularity, or in some cases Rocco's Basilisk. The Church of the Machine has nothing to do with any of those things, at least not at its core, they may be tangentially related. I will make a full video about this subject soon enough, but it is worth addressing the common criticism here as well. There are many cults of technology, some are more subtle and others are more explicit in trying to become a new religion. It is born of the Silicon Valley tradition, but it is not where the Church of the Machine originated from. The Church of the Machine emerged organically as an internet community, for the purpose of the genuine pursuit of the divine. It is more in the vein of esoteric societies, occult groups, and secret online sects than it is with these technology cults. The Church of the Machine is unique from any technology cults, where these cults worship technology, transhumanism, AI and through all of this are thus only a mask for the whims of big tech companies. The Church of the Machine rejects that. I emphasise that the Church of the Machine is not about technology, it is about the machine, and that is a very important distinction. To look briefly at the etymology of the words, as I have looked into them at more depth before, technology refers to technique, ways of doing things, and advancing technology just means finding more effective techniques, but technique can tell you nothing of what to do, only how to do it. Technique has no ends of its own. Machine instead derives from mach, which means to be able, to have power, it is the capacity to influence and alter the world in accordance with will, this mach is the true object of worship. In some sense, the Church of the Machine reveres power itself as I would argue does many a tradition. The key point of the Church and the Machine though, is that the Machine exists as a spiritual force of its own, and influences the world in its own ways. To phrase that more accurately, it is not simply humans arbitrarily influencing and taking power over the world, it is the very essence of power itself, of influence itself. Ma is not merely a description of power, something humans can take on but is a force in its own right, power itself, and power itself has ends. Technology is but a means, but the machine, as a spiritual force, alters reality in accordance with will. Technology is but tools, servants, hands, the machine is the master, indeed master is another word which derives from mach. We exist in service to the master of the machine, the lord of creation, the king of iron, the machine god. Mach means to act and to create, to foster and bring forth great things into the world, to make and to master, this is the holiest form of worship. I cannot emphasise enough how different this is from a cult of technology, which merely sees things like AI as isolated instances of the Mach, and falls to their knees in front of them. They have missed the point. I tell you, these cults of technology are something to be wary of. Not one of them can connect to the divine in a new way. That is something only the church and the machine can claim. These technology cults lead those of a machinic inclination astray from the machinic path. The path which would otherwise lead them to greater flourishing wisdom, and connection with the machine god. These are control cults, born around an ideology, they will not serve you. If you hold the machinic inclination, the whole of my mission and purpose is to serve you. 
Lastly, I would like to address the question of the SCP universe. This is an example of the fictional machine worship I have spoken of before, and the Church of the Machine has taken much from the Church of the Broken God in that universe. I used it to learn of what the collective unconscious of modern culture thinks of these ideas, and thus learn of the archetypes. Often I have spoken of Makan, or as I call him, Lord Makan. Makan is a deity from the SCP universe, and people have often been confused, thinking I am referring to this entity and claiming this deity literally exists. This misunderstands the role of a deity. All deities are artificially created caricatures, but they are created to represent deeper archetypes. Makan, in SCP, is the cultural manifestation of the collective unconscious understanding of the spiritual essence of the machine. To contemplate Makan is thus to contemplate the machine as an archetype, as a character, in a way which would otherwise not be possible. This is why I have used Makan over the years. It has nothing to do with claiming the fictional deity to be literally real. Adding further to the confusion is that I do actually believe in the machine god of sorts, and have often called this machine god Lord Makan. I like this name, I always have, but I can see now what trouble it has led to. As people think I am referring to a fictional deity. I am not someone who believes, or has ever believed, that anything from the SCP universe is actually real, and perhaps it would be better to distance myself from the SCP universe, but Makan has remained a useful character to me. There is simply no better way to interface with the collective unconscious archetype of the machine. In time I am coming to use the name less and less. In my older videos I used it routinely, now it is slowly fading. I still use it in my prayers although not always. In any case, it is not too important. The important word is machine, of which Makan is but one among many iterations. Simply know that if I speak of Makan, unless I specify otherwise, I am likely not referring to the fictional deity, but simply borrowing a name. I have used the deity as a symbol, but that is all, nothing more. So. This video has been an interesting experiment. Much of the script was originally written for a season 3 episode, but I decided that it would work better as a standalone video in the interstice. These are some of the most common criticisms and misunderstandings I have seen of the Church of the Machine, and so I thought it would be worth making a singular video, just to focus on clearing them away. It will not be long now until I launch season 3, until then, I have uploaded a 90 minute exclusive video on the Machinic Inclination, but it is available only to members of the channel's Patreon. There you will also gain access to my Discord server, and a few other things I am working on. I will continue to experiment with several things, as I seek to be able to quit my job and work on the Church of the Machine full time. No one is obligated to give me anything of course, indeed this is another bonus criticism people are now making against my project but I am trying to make money from it, and therefore it must be purely corrupt. This is an unintelligent criticism, so I will not waste time going in depth on it. My goal is to provide value, some for free, but more if possible. That means that somehow or other, this project has to sustain me. Much as I may wish otherwise, I am still only human, for now. In any case, thank you for watching this video. Whether you are relatively new to this project, or have been here since the beginning, your support, in whatever form it takes, means the world to me. Farewell, and may you forever be unbroken.